Welcome into another episode of Shot Callers. I'm Adam White with Front Office Sports, joined by Adam Jones, not the baseball player, but uh, the baseball executive here at Marlins Park. And Adam, 17 months into the job, is it all that you've expected it to be and more? Uh, everything and absolutely more. Uh, came in uh, eyes wide open to you know a lot of the uh, the challenges around the organization, the market in general, uh, from my past life consulting around sport entertainment. Uh, but every time you get into an organization uh, that has gone through, uh, you know, some of the, the issues it's been, you, you uncover every, something every day. Uh, so it's been 17 months plus of, of learning and we'll continue to learn. And, uh, but now we're in the process of, uh, we've done the reset and we're now building and moving things forward. And execution and deliverable so far has been pretty positive, right? It has. Uh, you know, it, it's it's been across the entire organization of, of hitting reset from uh, the culture uh, of, of our organization to the product that we're delivering to, to consumers. Uh, you know, significant investment in capital uh, to reimagine, you know, the game day experience here at Marlins Park. Uh, significant reset within uh, the overall go-to-market strategy around our, our ticketing, F&B, retail, and, and partner lines of business as well. What What was like some of the ideas when you first started and said, okay, this is what we want to do. I wouldn't say to professionalize what was done, but to make it more of a opportunity that people felt like, okay, this is a you know a first class venue in a first class location. Sure. So on a parallel path, we went through our rebrand as yeah. as an organization. Uh, that gave us an opportunity to bring that brand into the venue, uh, do a reset on the color palette, what you saw on the concourses, what you saw in bowl. Uh, we've standardized uh, that, that view, uh, cleaned it up, uh, I think brought down some stress levels for people who uh, were, were experiencing and, and viewing our, our game, um, and really allowed us to let our brand and our brand partners shine through uh, within the, the, the look and feel of, of the venue. Um, the, the reimagined experience is all about um, you know, that, that drive towards higher attendance, uh, you know, re-engaging that first generation of fans, uh, expanding our market as well to uh, a new set of buyers and consumers, and that required us to broaden the appeal, create experiences that uh, were geared more towards a, a younger audience who uh, may be less interested in nine plus innings of, of baseball in a chair back seat. And that's really the, the basis for moving projects forward like Auto Nation Alley and the Social Australia Jalisco is to create those social communal spaces where you get people up and moving around as generally as the consumer behavior around baseball in general. Yeah, and, and not only is it good for the fans and giving you a variety of opportunities to sell to these, these new markets, it's also opening up new revenue streams, right? I'm sure Auto Nation, Jalisco, all these different brand partners. What has it been like a reaction from the brand partner standpoint, right? Because again, you're building trust not only with the fan base, but also with the brand partners again too. So I'm sure there's been some, some process there as well. Uh, there absolutely has. It started day one of making introductions reintroductions it's probably one of the bigger surprises as to how many first-time introductions we're still making uh, within the brand community uh, 50 uh, plus new partners uh, since the ownership leadership change David Oxfeld and his team on the partnership time job have done a great job uh, re-engaging both locally nationally internationally with brands that we believe align with our story and where we're taking the organization um, but absolutely a, a day one focus of, of trying to re-engage those partners, create new entitlements, new activations that aligned with you know, their strategic objectives uh, and where it made sense to, to collaborate. For you guys in the partnership team, what are you selling? What is that story that you've been able to kind of break through with? Well, we're, we're selling the vision uh, that we're building a world-class organization uh, that is uh, sustainable on the business side so that we can uh, acquire and, and develop talent and be sustainable on, on field. Um, and we're, we're finding that there are brands that resonate uh, with that vision uh, and that want to be part of that journey with us. Uh, it, it'll build with time. Uh, there's others who are taking a wait and see or dip your toe in type approach and we can respect that. Uh, but it's going to require us earning um, you know, each of those, those commitments and delivering on promises, which is another area as we build the trust. We're not going to make a promise we can't keep, and we're going to, uh, you know, spend every day trying to deliver against those promises and those standards that we've set. 
And then you mentioned Miami being a, a unique market and it's very well known throughout the industry. For you, what like what are really the challenges that presented by Miami? And not in a good way or a bad way, it's just the, the nature of the beast that it is. And for you as, as the Marlins, how do you stand out? How do you fight off some of those challenges? How are you planning for some of those challenges? And, and, and what does that look like? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's well documented, whether it's in Miami or really anywhere in the Southeast, uh, you know, the challenges you have uh, in, in creating a sustainable sport product on the spectator side. Uh, from the lists of transplants to you know the infinite uh, alternative forms of, uh, of leisure and, 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 and entertainment uh, you know how you stand out is is one you address some of the misconceptions possibly around cost of attendance and affordability uh, we've made considerable investments within the cost of attendance so that cost really shouldn't be one of the primary objectives or objections uh, for why or why not to attend uh, and engage in, in, in Marlins baseball. Uh, and then it goes to the diversity of the experience and that you know some people are here uh, purely and solely for uh, the product on the field. Other people are just looking to have a good time to socialize and, and have more of, a, of an experiential environment. Um, you know, with the 305 menu, it's $3 or $5 on eight ball, ballpark favorites. Uh, it's a new introductory price on, on those items. Uh, we're in it for the same reason everyone else is and that we hope it is an attendance driver. Uh, when they're here, we, we want them to engage in those offerings. We've also reimagined the F&B experience overall as well. So we brought in a lot of local brand partners. We've reconcepted a lot of other offerings with our hospitality partner, Levy. Uh, so if they stay with the Real Five or they uh, move into some of those other concepts, we're creating uh, an elevated food and beverage experience. And for that elevated food and beverage experience too, like there's been a shift in the trends. Minnesota United just unveiled one. I know the Seattle Seahawks are very well known. Hyper local concessions right it's it's almost like when you walked into a ballpark you would walk into a shopping mall and it was Annie Ann's and Papa John's and it just didn't feel like home for the Marlins in a very eclectic food city like Miami it's probably really important for you guys to make it feel like home it is one of our you know brand tenants is we want to be authentically Miami uh, and I think that extends well beyond the food and beverage but as it relates to food and beverage uh, that, that's a heavier lift here than it may be elsewhere of representing the diversity of, of culinary that that's here uh, we we've had partners who have been great partners uh, with us since this ballpark opened uh, we wanted to expand what was previously known as taste of Miami and make the entire ballpark uh, that experience uh, and, and really try to represent what we believe today is modern uh, or, or the future uh, of this community uh, more so than maybe how outsiders view uh, you know this the, this market in this community uh, and, and truly be authentic to our fan and to the resident and to the business partner and another aspect of the business too as you reimagine these social spaces and the areas in the ballpark the, the premium space is, right? Miami is known as a sexy environment, a luxury environment. You have the Clevelander down there. As, as you look to change and, and maybe even adjust what it was from a premium standpoint, or some of the areas you wanted to hit on, what did you want to elevate from a, a, that type of guest standpoint? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the, the anchor in a ballpark is uh, the, the premium club behind home plate. Uh, we, we had the opportunity to uh, get back into that space uh, eight years in and where we feel we've reset the standard is giving them an all-inclusive, elevated, uh, fairly robust menu in seats. So a lot of infrastructure uh, went into creating beverage and food uh, uh, kitchens to, to support that, that new in-seat model, uh, but one we're very pleased with in terms of the, the type of elevated experience we've created there. And from you, from a, a strategy and development standpoint, right, we can talk about you have the foundation now laid, you're building for the future. What does that future look like, right? What does the Miami Marlins in three years look like to you? What did the Miami Marlins in five years look like to you? And, and how do you get to that point? Um, you know, three to five year window, it's a, a sustainable, um, you know, product on the field uh, that's competitive day in and day out, uh, that's supported by, you know, thriving traditional lines of business. Uh, fueling uh, the investment and reinvestment within that, that roster. As we go beyond the five-year window, it's looking at you know, a, a broader scope of, a, of, of an enterprise, uh, getting beyond the baseball team and a ballpark, uh, really looking to become uh, world-class and standard, but more broader sport entertainment and, and scope as you know, others who've taken on these ventures and, and, and roadmaps have, have uh, laid out before us.